Welcome back to the show. Here to talk about sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Limor Blockman. Hi, Limor. How are you Hi, doing today? Hi, Good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, we have um, a really important topic to discuss yes. today that uh, many people feel is taboo to talk about. Absolutely. And we're talking about sexless marriages or in general, you know, relationships that lack sexual mm -hmm. activity. I'm going to really define it, but let's start with a study that was a very long study, uh, approximately 30 years wow. between the 80s and the 2000s. They, they took um, groups and groups of people and kind of uh, just verified how much sex are they having and if it changed between that decade to this decade. And many changes have been taking place. Mm -hmm. And you know, the question is why, but we're going to get to it. The results were very interesting. First of all, all of us as a society are having much less sex, which is between 10 to 15 percent less than in the 90s. Yeah, why would it's that be? It's a lot. And there are a few reasons, and I'm going to get to it. I just want to say that if you're married, you're in a, in a worse condition. Oh, yeah? Yeah, between 20 and 25 percent less. Hmm. And the definition of sexless marriage, which is between 15 to 20 percent of society is in this definition of sexless marriage, which means that That's you have sex. a huge sex, percentage. Huge that you have sex less than once a month mm. or less than 10 times a year. Wow. And why is this happening? There are many factors. I'm going to get to the reasons uh, uh, who are the victims uh, of, these, uh, of this change that, is, that has been happening. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that um, what is it? Is it lack of love that created lack of sex? Or is it lack of sex that created lack of love? Mm -hmm. What came first? It's is, a question. Love, is love a factor, do you think? Can it's you, a very big question. That's, that's a question. I mean, obviously, you can still love someone without having sex. having sex, right? Absolutely. But, you know, as a correlation, do mm. we do this? Is Hollywood to blame? Mm -hmm. Did we fall into this trap that love and lust go hand in hand? Is this something that is imperative in a relationship? All these factors. And why is this happening? I'm going to get to it in a second. I want to say the victims are people in their 50s, people with a college degree. What? <laughs> we think too much. <laughs> so more and more people are talking about it. Yes, people yeah. with school-aged children, mm -hmm. people that don't watch pornography. What are you doing? Go and download something. Oh, really? It's people who don't watch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, okay. you know, all these factors. Yeah. So you think about, you think, you know, what are the, are these the reasons for if you don't watch pornography, you have a problem. If you do watch pornography, there is a, a different kind of problem. Mm -hmm. I want to say that if you look at people today, something very imperative comes to mind. And this is, uh, you know, the social media and, and you know, phones, cell phones. Yes, cell phones. We are so locked inside our screens. We just, we don't even notice that there's a, a person on the other side. Yeah. It's a very big problem. I see people on dates that look mm. like this. Yeah. And it's terrible. We don't have conversations. Moreover, we really don't use, you know, to have a very good conversation or some some form of connection between two people, you have to use all your five senses. Mm -hmm. Think about it when you text or when you use any form of, of social media, you don't really use these five senses. Yeah. You know, at best, maybe visual mm -hmm. or maybe sound. But you don't really use these senses and it's a big problem and we're, uh, we're plagued with being unhappy. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, a lot of factors that come to mind when you think of uh, age 30 and up. People um, testify the use of antidepressants, which mm -hmm. harm our sex drive as well. And I want to say something very important. People uh, think, and I always tell it to people that come and ask me about two things, about how frequent should sex be and why, what can we do about it? Is there a so, magic answer? Is anymore? there a magic answer? The magic answer is this. If you want to have a six pack, you go to the gym and you work on it. Mm -hmm. If you have a relationship and you want to have a sexual relationship, you have to work on mm -hmm. it. And I want to say something that I'll be probably burnt at the stake for saying as <gasps> someone in my field. It doesn't have to be that frequent if both of you agree. And listen to what I'm saying. If both of yeah. you agree that this frequency is good for you. Mm -hmm. If one of you is just dragging along the other one, it's not okay. But otherwise, people really change. You know, things change in your relationship. Kids come. There's different different difficulties you deal with. There's pressure at work. There's use of medication. Yeah. There's very and various kids things. And aging. And yes. it all seems to be a factor. Everything. I just want people to understand there's no magic number. If you are happy in your relationship and if your exchange is not typically sexual, 
that's okay as well. Mm -hmm. And also, big advice, put down the phone. Absolutely. It really does seem put to be... Put it down. You have to download something <laughs> and then put it up. It really seems to be a relationship killer. And, and not just romantic relationships. Absolutely. Friendships, everything. As you said, I mean, I've seen whole families sitting in restaurants. Yeah, no conversations. Not talking. Not looking. Yeah. There's no eye contact. Drop it. Yeah, and you mentioned <laughs> social media as well. Everyone puts their best foot forward in social yeah. media. There's so much competition, and you're yeah. always comparing yourself to other people. Absolutely. Uh, and that, that must have a factor as well. And comparison is the killer of joy. So really yeah. just focus on yourself and your partner. And as I said, it's, it's a relationship. It's something that is connected to both of you, mm -hmm. and you have to agree on it. Certainly. Well, thanks so much, Nimor, for Thank being you, here. Lydia. And you're going to like this next story, Absolutely. I'm sure. Uh, in Japan, crowds flocked to the western city of Nagaoka on Sunday to see women ride through the streets atop giant wooden penises. Not kidding. This is real life. It's part of a bizarre annual festival where newlywed women mount the giant phallus. Tradition has it that if you take the ride, you will be awarded with fertility, good luck, and marital bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, right? I know, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a yearly it's thing. It's a festival, yeah. <laughs>